Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. A little bit nervous. Me too. Fingers crossed, it's been weeks at this point. A couple who recently, after years of dreaming, bought ourselves a beautiful 40-foot Colvick Victor sailboat. Life is short and the world is wide and there are so many lessons to be learned. Laughs shared, people met, adventures had, and nautical miles to be sailed. And this is our way of sharing it all with you. Welcome to the daily. Bloody doing it. <laughs> Yesterday we had a bit of an issue with our gas. It wouldn't actually get through to the hob and oven we've got down there. We don't normally use gas that much. We've got an induction. So when we're on um, shore power at the moment, we tend to just use that and only use it when we want to get oven things. So we've been troubleshooting quite a bit and we found that there's no gas. So this connects directly to the butane bottle. This goes through to our regulator. When we just have this connected to the butane tank, and that going through the regulator and it's taken off. There's no gas going through this pipe, so we think there's an issue with the valve in this little pipe. So, we've got a new pipe, but an issue with that, that's an old fitting on there. I think it's kind of a custom job done by one of the last owners. So, we decided to do away with that, have any like risk of gas leaks. We're obviously gonna get an engineer to go over and check all this properly later on, but we've got a new pipe. And we've also got a new regulator as well because the regulator should be changed every 10 years or so. And we have no idea when this one was last changed. So new pipe, which needs to be changed every five years, which should now work, and a new regulator. So we're just going to fit that now and get that all sorted. This is our current gas situation. That's the old regulator. And what I need to do is just take that off and replace it with the new one. So fingers crossed it's nice and easy. The hose fits on there and it obviously attaches to the... It fits on the new one. Yeah, but I'm just trying to figure out how this regulator is going to attach into the um, hosing that we've got at the moment. It feels like it should, but it just doesn't. It's quite a shallow thread as well, which is making me... It's not right. No, it's not right. Just want to have a eureka moment, it stops. Of course. Not the gas, the camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've just figured out a configuration for the copper piping here and threads so it can actually fit onto our current setup. The new pig's tail, which is the connector from the butane gas bottle to the regulator, fits on. This now really nicely screws on there and that all tightens up like that. And this fits on here. And there we go. Every time I turn it on, there's just gas coming out of other places. Right. Out of this white nozzle, and then, yeah. So I'm just hanging out in our V-Birth cabin at the moment because, why not? We kind of forget this cabin's up here sometimes because the door's always shut. And I thought I'd chat to you all about the gas right now. So, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, we basically need this weird adapter, which doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. I don't know how the previous owners managed it i think they just did a little diy jobby but essentially it doesn't exist and at this point as you saw it just kept leaking on zach we could have used ptfe tape but it's just it just wasn't ideal with gas you just want it to be as simple as possible so if there was ever a leak you know exactly where to look but more so than that just a simpler system means as less things that are likely to leak so yeah, that just wasn't working. It's just that kind of project that we just put aside after that. We were like, you know what? <laughs> we're happy with cold food for now. <laughs> and obviously on shore power, we've got induction. So we didn't need that. Yeah, if we went off sailing, we would just eat cold food and it was fine. Like just as we turn the fridge off when we go sailing to save our batteries because they're not great. We just, we just work around it, you know? We're very flexible young people here. <laughs> we don't need hot food or cold food or whatever. Food can just be whatever temperature the air is. Anyway, we decided to kind of push it to the side and have a bit more fun and 
look for a tender and an outboard because you know a while back we got ourselves an outboard and we were so over the moon about this outboard so the good news is we have ourselves an outboard Ooh. and we were so happy with it until we realized it was a long shaft and um it was not right for us at all long shafts are meant for like boats um, and we were getting like a dinghy so it would have sat too far down and there was always a chance it could like flip or anyway it just wasn't right so we had this bloody outboard on the back of the boat for so long that we were so happy about but it just wasn't fit for purpose um, so we ended up selling that and the guy who bought it was really happy with it so that was a win but we still didn't have a dinghy and now we didn't also have an outboard even a wrong outboard we didn't have an outboard at all anyway we borrowed a lovely friends martin and emma's dinghy um, they're the guys who have the boat cats you might have seen them from a little while ago they let us borrow their hon wave 2.7 meter dinghy and it was so much fun first we just used it to clean around the boat and um, while next door we were out and then we got to take it for a little spin and they've got a i think it was a six horsepower four stroke engine and this thing just went and it was so much fun Whee! First tender ride, testing it out. Oh, <laughs> so much fun! Yeah. Yeah. Firstly, Zach just took us for a spin, and then it was so funny because he took it back, and then Zach went to work, and I returned it to. You martin and emma's boat um, and i had never driven a dinghy before and it was so funny because i was going around the breakwater and i kept every time i accelerated i pushed it away from me and i just kept doing circles at full speed and people were looking at me like is she okay it was so funny i was just like screaming laughing people probably thought i was drunk i was just like doing circles all the way up to their boat anyway by the end i kind of figured it out uh yeah that was quite an experience but it was a really fun doing it and it planed really easily because it had the two little i don't know what they're called the two little you know what i mean that <laughs> two little things on the back and hon waves are known for that being able to plane really easily it was an inflatable floor that was kind of our like benchmark but our budget wasn't that benchmark at all so what we did was we just waited a bit and we got chatting to next door and they are so lovely anyway zach was chatting to the guy next door um and he said oh you haven't got a dinghy i've got one lying about at home haven't used it in a long while but you know it'll do the job a little outboard 3.5 to hatsu outboard um i'll bring it up you can give it a go and if you want it you can buy it off me for really cheap so we we're like okay cool and we pump this thing up give it a clean and put it in the water and it took us <laughs> not kidding it took us literally 40 minutes to start the engine and the guy was like yeah just try this then try this we're in the dinghy still attached to him. <laughs> we did this loads last time. Yeah. Anyway, it took us 40 minutes to get it started. It just wasn't ideal. There was no way I could have started it. It was really light, which was nice. I think the only thing was the carburetor needed a clean, which we could have done, but anyway, I'll get, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we pumped up the dinghy and it had uh, not an inflatable floor, just like a flexi floor with some like wood slats. And we took it across the channel and it was spring tides and it, the tide was ripping. So I have no idea if you're gonna hear me right now. Probably not. But you know, we said about the tide pushing. Look at that. We jumped into wetsuits because we wanted to go for a little swim over the other side, but genuinely, like me and Zach don't, I know sometimes the videos make it seem like we do, but we genuinely don't get scared easily. We love the water. We love boats. We love the water. We love swimming. We love surfing. Yeah. We're not scared of the water by any means, but we're, when we were going up, the whole dinghy floor was like this. I felt like we were about to sink at any time. And the motor was just like, <laughs> splatter, splatter, splatter. <laughs> And we were genuinely, the tide was like that, and we were like that, and we were moving maybe like one knot, if that. Um, we looked around and we were comparing it to like this big stanchion in the water. The tide was ripping around and we just weren't moving. And we were thinking at this point, okay, this is a, like a naval channel, like big frigates come through. If we need to move out of the way right now, we just can't. Like we have, it was so hard to steer. It, just, it was just not safe. 
basically. Um, so we both made the call to turn around and come back. I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah, me too. Should we just go there? Yeah. Um, anyway, next door, they were like, how did you like it? And Zach was like, oh yeah, I liked it, but um, I don't really know the whole story. But basically, next door oh, misheard us and, and thought we said we'd really like it. So anyway, we ended up buying this dinghy off them accidentally. We couldn't say no, it was just, it was a whole situation. Um, so we bought the dinghy off them, <laughs> even though we just like didn't feel safe in it whatsoever. Anyway, we, we then later had a chat with them and we were like, it's not okay, but you know, because you lent it to us and stuff, we're happy to sell it on your behalf. So we ended up selling on on their behalf, which was all fine. And then we went just weeks without a dinghy and we just thought, you know what? <laughs> if there's a dinghy out there, it will come to us. After that whole dinghy thing, we were like, okay, now we've got to go back to the gas situation. We hadn't had gas in about two or three weeks. <laughs> we were like, it's time. We can't put it off or procrastinate any longer. We ended up just going and basically pulling the whole system out up to the copper tube in the tank and just putting a whole new system in. We'd spoken to some people at the marina and they were like, oh, this is our system. It works really well do this. So we're like, yep, yeah, let's just do that, you know? If we're struggling to find a part in the UK, if we're wherever around the world, we're just not gonna have any chance finding a part. Okay, so we've had an absolute nightmare with our gas situation and the fact that the little part, the adapter bit we needed for our very overly complicated system um, just doesn't exist. So we don't really know what they did before. We think they just kind of did a, a little bit of a DIY solution, um, but we've just found I think a better solution. So we got a new regulator, a gas hose, gas hose and a, like a, a quick release thingy. So hopefully this all works. Fingers crossed, it's been weeks at this point. <laughs> we went and got a new regulator. It's not a marine grade one, but, 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 but. We did quite a lot of research and actually, you, you're meant to swap them out quite often anyway. So rather than getting a fancy marine grade one, which we couldn't get to fit and might leak, we thought it's better just to get a normal one and just, buy a few of them and swap them out more regularly and um, plus we turn the gas off each time we use it so i think we're at a pretty low chance of a gas leak through the regulator so we went for that and we just got a normal orange gas pipe rather than these pigtails i don't know where they even came from or who uses them or why they need to exist but we just got a plain tube with two connectors on each end It didn't leak. Zach put washing up liquid all over it and there was no bubbles. I tested it, it all worked fine. And the gas, the gas locker now doesn't smell like gas. And when we got the boat, it stunk of gas. So it's lovely to feel like the gas system is finally working. With that in mind, we were so happy that the gas was all fixed. We went out to celebrate. Um, and rather than going for a little sail and, you know, cooking up a, a roast dinner, <laughs> using the gas we were like let's go on to land and go for a little wander to the stream eat some fruit um and visit some otters because there's an otter sanctuary near us um and it was just so lovely otters are my favorite animal and yeah it was a lovely day And then getting back, we were like, okay, gas system's fixed, had a great day out, we're gonna get a dinghy. Today's the day. <laughs> so we have a scout through Facebook Marketplace and one just pops up and it's literally 10 minutes down the road and it's a little Zodiac 
aluminium floor, 2.7 meter. I think it's called a sib, which is like a, a rib with a softer bottom. I think semi inflatable bottom. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, so yeah, we found this Zodiac and um, we really wanted a rib. Our budget doesn't cater for ribs at this point in time, to be honest, because obviously with a rib, you need a slightly bigger engine as well to power it because it's heavier. Um, and our budget didn't cater for that either. So we ended up going with the Zodiac. We finally, finally bought our own dinghy. Obviously we've been through a few before, um, but this one is, this one's it. We're so happy with it. We've got a little five horsepower, two stroke Suzuki engine and it's all been really well looked after. It's exactly what we need. We're gonna blow it up and we're gonna go for a little spin in it. It doesn't go the fastest. It can just about get on the plane, just about, but it does the job and it's our new car and I love it. And Zach loves it and it goes on the davits really nicely and the other day we lifted it onto the deck and it's fantastic, honestly. One day we'll upgrade, but not today. We are so happy with our little Zodiac dinghy. We went to the beach, had a little zip the other day uh, and it all just has come together. We've got a dinghy, we've got working gas, we can cook hot food, we can go for a swim. It's just, oh, so that's where we're at. <laughs> that is where we're at. Uh, things are going great. Before now, things weren't going great, but now they're going great. And that is boat life. So that is the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Yeah, hope you all enjoyed. And we'll catch you again next week for 444. Four, four. I never give some sneak hints in videos, but we're going on a big trip next week. Ooh, we're going on a natural sailing trip. So yeah, look out for that video. We can put all our gas skills into practice. <laughs> Okay, bye.